well, this is not how I wanted my day to go. Driving a first gen, running to the bank to get cash to buy another truck. I could smell something burning. My voltage gauge went through the roof. And then if you look at this wire, it's like melted. If you follow it all the way over, I mean, it is completely fried and melted to pieces. It's wonderful. And I was actually sitting in the truck going down the road, of course. Where else would you be, right? And I could see smoke coming through some of my vents. And then I also heard the radio start to pop, make some noise, and it was starting to go. That right there starting to cause me some problems. And I don't know if it's just because the alternator went bad or what happened, but clearly there's something wrong with this unit right there. As you saw in the previous clips, the first gen was getting loaded up on a tow truck because it caught on fire. Now, before you guys freak out, okay, no, the truck did not burn to the ground on the side of the road. And I'll get into the whole scenario of what happened. I still don't know exactly what the culprit was, but we have a pretty sure idea of what happened. And no, no there's nothing wrong. It's not like, oh my gosh, now nobody's going to get the truck or, you know, like none of that. Don't just don't read into any of that. Let me get through this video here. And I'll kind of go into detail and go over some things. First off, yes, we drive the giveaway trucks while we own them. Why do we do that? For example, they first gen is 33 years old or almost 34 years old. If we do not drive that truck at least a handful, at least a handful of hundreds of miles, three, four, five hundred miles while we own it, how are we supposed to know it's gonna be a good truck for you if we have never put even a mile behind the steering wheel? We have to drive these vehicles, guys. They're not brand new trucks. You pull off a lot that you can buy it, do a bunch of sick mods and park it in a shop and then just wait until the winter comes to get it and never drive it once because you're just, you know it's a brand new truck worst case scenario it has problems it's the dealership's problem it's a brand new truck with no miles on it right with our trucks it's different and we understand that when you're in a niche of older pre-emissions trucks that means you're dealing with older stuff generally most of our trucks are over 15 to 18 years old would be like one of the newer ones okay we do a lot of stuff that's older 2007 we drive we try to stick to mostly pre-emissions trucks cool thing about that is there's really nobody else doing that because nobody wants to mess with it the downside of that is you have more unexpected stuff happen with old trucks because a you're really just relying on the information you get from these people that owned it previously that it's accurate and true but in the same sense even if they are completely honest and everything is to a t you can just have stuff that wears out that wasn't currently wore out yet on the truck or just random things happen because of old wiring which might have been part of the problem with what's going on with the first gen right now stuff like that but even some of the trucks that seem like the nicest ones like this first gen was literally like the guys like i've redone everything on the truck it's literally like you could eat off the frame it's so clean which it really is it's a really really clean truck it's nice moral of the story is when you're dealing with old stuff stuff just happens like for the most part we we're usually pretty fortunate to where we deal with people that are honest and we don't have any issues and the trucks really are just as amazing as they say and it, it's all great we've had very few exceptions where that's not the case and in this case, I don't think it was a scenario where the guy wasn't honest about anything. He seemed like a real straight shooter, super nice guy. And literally the truck never gave me a single problem. I drove it uh, two hours and back to buy a log splitter one time with a trailer. I drove it, I mean, I wanna say I probably put seven or 800 miles on that truck in the last six weeks since I bought it. Just because I love driving it, it was a great truck. Brakes are great, runs great. I mean, everything about it is just fantastic. It's just an amazing truck. And I am one of the most gentle people with my vehicles. I don't know if you guys have noticed on my YouTube channel or my TikTok or my anything. We're not like rolling around, shredding tires, doing burnouts, trying to beat the living piss out of a truck before we give it to you. That's not what we do. We usually service the trucks. We have them looked over front to back. Just a basic maintenance check just to make sure like it's not going to need a bunch of ball joints or it's not going to need you know, a new power steering pump, or it's not gonna, like something that's gonna cause you some kind of problem that should be, you know, caught easily under a routine check. So we have that stuff, basic stuff checked, almost every single giveaway truck, just to make sure we're not missing something obvious that needs to be taken care of before it goes off to somebody. And that's usually right after we buy the trucks, we do a service and we have it all looked over, right? And most of the time that's because I don't wanna be driving it while I have it, 
if it's got some kind of an issue that I just wasn't able to identify on my own. I like to have it looked over. So the first gen, never give me a problem. Again, I don't beat on my trucks. I don't do burnouts. I don't freaking hot rod them out. I don't freaking fly everywhere in them. I'm the type, I get in the truck and I drive it just like I would drive my wife's CRV here. Like I get in it and I just drive it around casually. I'm not abusive on my vehicles, not even a little bit. So I'm in the first gen and I'm going to the bank to get cash to buy another truck. Of course, another, another old one. Same type of thing, found this thing. The guy's like, you're never gonna find one nicer than this. It's literally pristine, low miles, manual transmission. Like it's freaking mint. And I'm over here like, you're speaking my language, bro. That's what I like to hear. So I'm on my way, I'm like, I'm gonna go to the bank. I'm gonna grab some money because this sounds like a truck I want, which hopefully there's a new video coming soon. Maybe, maybe the next video, I don't know. We'll see what happens. If this guy was honest, it'll probably be in the next video you see the truck that we're buying next. Back to the first gen. I'm on my way to the bank. I don't make it two miles from the house. And I like, I thought I smell something burning. And I'm like, kind of smelled like brakes burning. Like a, kind of, it just smelled like brakes burning. Like, you know, you have a caliper seize up or something or, you know, brand new set of brake rotors and pads. Like it just kind of had that smell to it, right? And I was just driving, smelling it. I'm like, man, I'm like, what smells like brakes are sticking or something. And I was only down the road like two miles from the house. And so I like pulled over, put my flashers on. And I, I'm the type where any weird sounds, any weird smells, like it weirds me out. So I immediately try to check it out. I don't just go, oh, put some tape over the engine light. Let's just keep driving the thing and hope that nothing happens. Like that kind of stuff drives me nuts. So I smell something, I get out and check and I'm feeling around the rotors. And then I was like, okay, now I not hot it shouldn't be hot we've only been on the road for two miles you know and everything seems good and then i popped the hood even and i'm looking around under the hood and at the time i'm like i don't see anything nothing looks bad nothing looks you know i don't where i don't know where that smell would be coming from i'm like even smelling around the engine man like i can't think of anywhere that would be coming from and so then i get back in the truck and i don't make it down the road another half mile and then i'm like oh crap there's like smoke coming in through my vents and then the radio has like smoke coming out around the radio and then the radio goes like makes a psh, 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 like a popping sound and so i immediately pull over to the side of the road and i see a creek so i immediately pull over and throw my truck in park just turn the thing off completely because i'm thinking there's some kind of an electrical issue so i don't want to have any kind of power running through the truck so i immediately hop out turn the thing off undo everything I'm, I'm well off the road like i'm in the grass off the road and run down to the creek and i happen to have a couple of empty like uh, water bottles in the truck so i went down to fill them up real quick and i'm like waiting looking around the truck just to make sure there's no nothing and as soon as i turn the truck off the smoking immediately stopped like like everything just stopped as soon as i turned the truck off i'm looking around the engine bay trying to you know figure something out and i, could, I wasn't figuring it out at the time and I was looking in the wrong areas and I just wasn't looking hard enough. And then I'm looking, I'm like, what in the world? So I noticed that the power cable going to and from the alternator was completely burned, like beginning to end of the wire. The whole thing was like crisped and falling apart. Just not good. I mean, it, it was all burned up. The plastic around the wiring was all melted. Um, the little plastic connector around the alternator at the base of it on those first gens, or maybe it's just the one that I happen to have, you know, all melted and hot and uh, just not good, right? And so I'm like, what in the world? So I ended up calling the shop where I'm going to have this thing taken to, which they have it now. And I called him, I said, hey man, this is what's going on. This is what just happened. And he's like, honestly, dude, it sounds to me like you had an alternator failure and the power running through that wire was just completely out of whack with voltage and um it just got too hot burned up your wiring and so he's like i don't know for sure if we're gonna have to replace like a lot of the wiring on that first gen or if we'll only have to replace some of the wiring but he's like i would not start that truck up again and drive it home like that 
So, like I was saying, I just had to run into the bank there, but they built my father-in-law's transmission on his truck. They had to fix a Jeep of theirs when they had a problem out of town visiting. And they've always been able to fix stuff pretty fast and always pretty much know exactly what it is, even before we bring it in. Like, if we just describe it, they're like, this is the problem. And like, they just know. And they're the highest recommended of anybody in the area. If you call and ask, they're like, go to these guys. They know what they're doing. And it almost doesn't matter what they're working on. They just, they know, or they know somebody who can get over there and fix it. So I called him and I was like explaining what happened. And he said, well, he's like, honestly, it sounds like you had a catastrophic alternator failure essentially. And it sent way too much voltage through all the lines, the wiring and just fried it. And he's like, I don't know if we're gonna have to replace like all of your wiring that's somehow linked to that or if it'll just be as simple as you know just some of the main stuff that was affected but he's like we're just gonna have to get in here tear the alternator off trace the wiring and just look for anything that could have possibly like melted or caused any kind of problems or rubbed anything raw but i did notice that right before i saw smoke coming through my vents when i got back in the truck started going down the road again i noticed that my voltage meter just went from like normal to like pinned it went like to completely to 18 volts and then right after that i was like that's unusual and then it was like smoke coming out the vents um it was literally like just like that and that's when i was like oh no so then i knew it was a wiring problem and something was going really really wrong those, those guys are legit there's nowhere else i'd rather the truck be and conveniently it happened like two miles from their shop which is better than where it could have ended up so the truck is still super local it's literally just a couple miles from my house um which is nice don't know what to think of it i mean you guys can let me know down in the comment section below what you think happened or what all you think we should look into to make sure that that doesn't happen again the only wiring that i saw that was for sure burnt the only wiring that i saw that was for sure melted and bad cables coming off of the alternator but in the same token I did see the radio smoking and stuff on the inside of the truck right before I turned it off. The radio started smoking and there was a little bit of smoke coming from under the dash. And then, like I said, I turned the truck off and all the smoke and everything just stopped. And it was just done. So that's where we're at with that currently. And, you know, I don't want to make this video, just so you guys know. Like, this doesn't come across as me having a good time being like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, having a problem with the truck. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because, you know, we're supposed to have a winter now within the next day or two, hopefully. We're still waiting on a winter for that truck. And now the truck's at the shop. You know what I'm saying? With this winter, whoever it might be, it could be you. I have no idea. You watching this video, that truck could, you could be the winner of that truck. But it's like, the truck is so nice. And the only other time I've heard of somebody having a vehicle like that catch on fire was literally the exact same truck. It was my brother-in-law. He had a 1990 Dodge, same year and everything, same year and everything, 1990 Dodge. And he had smoke coming from under the dash, pulled over and he had to freaking dump a bunch of wire on water on it or like he had a small fire extinguisher in his truck or something and he had to try to put it out. And then he had to replace like all the wiring behind his dash. And it was apparently like a real pain in the butt. But that's the only other person that I know of personally, like that I know family or friend wise that has had anything like that happen. And it was on the same truck, literally almost the exact same truck. It's gonna get fixed, or at least they said it's gonna get fixed. And then I'll update you as I have answers. Currently, I don't have any answers other than alternator failure. The alternator was blazing hot and the positive cable going to and from it was completely melted but uh alternator failure and uh some wires got melted under the hood at least the only two that i could see and i looked under the dash and i was looking around the radio wiring i was trying to see and i couldn't i couldn't find any wires under the dash that were like melted or hot or anything like that i looked around crawled around i'm looking i'm like i don't see anything wrong under the dash and then i looked under the hood and that's when i saw the two cables coming off or two wires coming off the alternator were completely melted and toasted so hopefully the radio just blew a fuse and got a little bit hot or something and all we have to do is replace the wiring going to and from the alternator look over all the other stuff and hopefully nothing else is bad 
and then maybe just the radio needs new fuses or the radio needs replaced. That's the best case scenario. Best case scenario is it's just the basic wiring going to and from the alternator, new alternator, and a new radio. That's, that's what I'm hoping is like the worst that happened. But I don't know, and they said that they won't know until they try to diagnose, and they're gonna do a bunch of wire testing, and they're gonna just try to look over all the obvious stuff and make sure they don't see anything like any raw spots in the wiring that could have gotten hot and melted a little bit of the coating off and caused any kind of issues that could cause another issue. So that's the current update. Not the news I necessarily wanted to bring anybody, but I also hate the idea of you know people asking a bunch of questions and then just not knowing like where the heck's the truck if it's gone for a couple of weeks like what happened one thing happened one time with a guy he freaking found out he won the truck and i'm like driving the truck and then it like starts slipping a gear and i'm like what the heck and it was a truck that i was told had a brand new built not just rebuilt a built transmission and i had driven the truck and it drove great and then out of nowhere i'm driving it and one day it just starts slipping a gear. I'm like, what the heck? I'm like, there's no way that truck just is slipping a gear. Like, like it's been perfect the whole time I've had it. I've had it and I had the truck for like six weeks at that point, not a problem. And then it does it again. And I'm like, you gotta be joking. I took it down and the transmission build shop had to put like 5,000, I think it was like 4,900 some dollars into it. And at this point it was already technically the other guy's truck. He had signed paperwork. I had already sent him his cash and everything. He just hadn't like I PayPal'd him all of his funds for his five grand that he won and everything. But the truck was still technically sitting in my house until he could get to it. And you know, you know, I had to pay to get it fixed, but it's just one of those things where it just like, I, like I'm more glad that something like that, this is what you have to really think about and understand. For me, it sucks, you know, but I'd rather it happen while I own it than somebody win the truck and think that I tried to like screw them over or something because something happened to go bad right after they get it. Like you have to understand that they're still old vehicles. They're still gonna need maintenance. They're still gonna have random things that go bad over time. But I just want people to know that when a vehicle leaves our driveway, it left the driveway with the understanding that it didn't have any issues when it left. Like if it has issues down the road, that's outside of our control. But like, I wanna make sure when a vehicle leaves our driveway, if we know there's something wrong with it that needs fixed, we get it taken care of before it goes into your hands. So, you know, that's how we try to do things. And it's just one of them things, just one of those things. But hey, look at the bright side. Somebody didn't get the phone call a week ago and then pick the truck up and have it burned down on the side of the road because of a problem that they had no idea was gonna happen. Everything has a reason even when we don't understand and maybe for whoever's sake that is gonna win that truck and for my own sake, luckily the problem that that truck just had today happened to just so happen to happen within two miles of the best you know, repair shop in the county. And it just so happened to happen when I still own the truck and the winter announcement is just running a little bit late to where the truck hasn't been picked up yet because we don't know who won the truck yet. I mean, sometimes things seem really inconvenient, but they end up being better and you just really don't know why. Like you really can't explain it. You don't know why things happen the way that they do. And then down the road, it just kind of makes a little bit more sense that if that if that sounds like if that makes sense to you guys i don't know i mean we freaking appreciate you guys like crazy rosine is up for grabs right now do you want to get entered to win my wife's truck well her old truck not her new truck but my wife's 2002 24 valve cummins that comes with five thousand dollars in cash Hit the link in the description below or go to lnpgear.com. Place those orders because somebody's got to take that truck home. That somebody could easily be you. You're probably watching this video and going, I'm not so sure I want to enter for a truck now. Oh, trust me. When it leaves our driveway, it's going to be, it's going to be solid. But yeah, unfortunately for the first gen, I don't know. See, I wasn't even supposed to drive that truck. That's the thing. Like I was like, I'm going to just take the car. I'm just going to take my truck. And I'm like, 
you know, I haven't driven that first gen in like two weeks. I should probably drive that truck. I haven't driven it in a little bit and we're supposed to get a winter soon. I'm like, I should probably drive that thing. So I freaking hop in the thing to drive it. Not two miles from the house, that happens. Like I said, I, you know, sometimes you don't know why things happen and sometimes you just don't understand the reason. I'm gonna say this, peace out. If you wanna get entered to win, Rosine right there, that big red beast. LMPgear.com, giveaways ending next weekend. You're running out of time. Peace.